The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 65. Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and a sinner a hundred years old, years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom of God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me 
where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord God planted a garden, a garden in Eden. And God created the perfect first home for Adam and Eve. The tree of life was always fresh and ripe with fruit and vegetation to enjoy. And for Adam, the master gardener, the labor of tending and taking care of this most beautiful garden was complete joy. But that joy was short-lived. Adam and Eve, falling for the serpent's lies, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and did surely die. Sin and death entered into the world, infected all of creation, and they're booted out. They're kicked out of this most glorious home, this perfect garden home. So no longer a master gardener. Adam knew. He knew that producing a beautiful garden would be challenging. It would be very, very hard work. Thorns and thistles, disease and pests infested the ground. The ground now cursed by God and only by sweat and hard toil would he bring forth fruit. God had a plan, a plan to reverse the plague on his garden. He promised a second Adam, a new master gardener, to make his garden grow again in perfection one day. Three days ago, on Good Friday, God's plan was fulfilled. The second Adam laid down his life to reverse the curse. And now today, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene is found alone. So she thinks. But notice that Mary, who cared so deeply for her Lord, even at the foot of the cross when he is giving up his last breath, she is there in a cemetery. But, not just a cemetery, in a garden cemetery owned by a secret disciple of Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea. We read about this just prior at the end of chapter 19 of John's Gospel. But as we learn, there is a reason that we're now back in a garden of death something Mary in her weeping grief couldn't see. But she would eventually hear good news. In her confusion, in her disappointment, and only looking for one thing, the only thing that she could possibly see was a dead body. The dead body of her Lord. She says, my Lord, she was kept from recognizing Jesus at all. She thought that he had been taken away by grave robbers. But in her confusing state, Jesus came, comes to her. But first, she only recognizes him as the gardener. 
But Mary is also speaking truth. Truth when she recognizes him as the gardener, her master. He is her Lord. He is her teacher. But he is also the master gardener. First, he asked Mary, Why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Well, my friends, maybe you aren't weeping this morning. Most of us are filled with joy, cheerful joy, joyful moods this morning. Maybe some of us not so much because it's so early, but we are filled with the joy, the resurrection of our Lord. It's Easter, right? Is it Easter? Yes, it is indeed. But even with the happy smiles on your face, maybe you are deep down weeping inside. Maybe you are hurting, you are grieving, or you are suffering in some way, shape, or form. You're weeping over loved ones you've lost. And you don't know maybe even where they are. You're uncertain. You're weeping over the death in our world around us, the the murder of other Christians. We hear even in the news this morning in Sri Lanka, the burning of so many churches in Nigeria and other places. There is so much grief. There is so much suffering in this world You just know that for your loved ones, you can't touch them anymore. You can't see them face to face anymore. You can't hear their voice. Maybe faintly, in your mind, you can hear them. Mary felt all of this in losing her Lord, her Lord, her friend, the one who had cast seven demons out of her and cared for her so much. And now he's gone for good. Who has taken him away? Who has stolen his body? And so you also have a right to weep. You have a right to mourn, just as Mary, because... Even though it is Easter, we still, we face death day to day, and death utterly sinks. Even though there are gardeners and caretakers of cemeteries today, and they do such a wonderful job of of making them so beautiful looking, just think of the irony, though, in how the funeral industry works. They put a mask over the deep, dark, mournful reality of death. Now, I don't mean to be too graphic, but in the draining and embalming process of a dead body, it is not for the faint of heart. Maybe you've uh, seen too much CSI or other shows on TV that that you've seen a lot. You've seen a lot of dead bodies, but not certainly up close and personal. Maybe you've fallen a little immune to this, but the undertaker's job is dark. And then not to mention all of the the sweet euphemisms that are thrown out there today. Oh, he or she, they're, they're in a better place They passed away. Oh, she looks so beautiful in her casket. Or we might say, oh, he's enjoying Tiger Woods' master's win in heaven as he plays on the heavenly golf course every day. All of this, all of it's said to try to cover up the truly grotesque reality of death But my friends in Christ, a new reality is unveiled 
for all of us to hear and to see this morning from Jesus. Just as Jesus uses only one word from the cross to say it is finished, to telestai. With one word, one word, he brings joy to Mary by saying her first name. Mary. All things are changed. Weeping and blindness are turned to joy and clear sight. And she responds with one word, Rabboni, teacher, master, it's you. That very same word, one word, that our Lord uses to also call you. To call you by name. Your first name. He knows you so well. He loves you oh so much. He has called you in your baptism to be his brother. He is your Lord. He is your Savior. And from now on, as he is your good shepherd, you recognize his voice when he calls you by name and you follow him. Instead of facing the tomb of death still in the face, Mary, she now turns, she turns immediately And she faces Jesus, and she faces now no longer death, but she faces resurrection, life, straight in the face. But she can't hold on to Jesus. She might have knelt down and and held on to his feet, but she can't hold on to Jesus, for he has not yet ascended, and for she has good news to share, to share with others. In that garden tomb of death, Christ is risen from death's dark prison. His body isn't taken away. He is risen to transform the garden of death to a new eternal garden of life, a new Jerusalem that he will create as he makes all things new again. Revealed in our Old Testament lesson, I encourage you to meditate on those words from Isaiah 65. And also in Revelation 22, God is bringing us into a life of perfection in his eternal garden. The garden that will include the tree of life and the river of life in the new garden of Eden. For now, as we wait as we wait for the new heavens and the new earth, as we wait for our new Garden of Eden paradise, Jesus, our resurrected master gardener, still keeps and tends to the garden of his church. He gathers us into his house. He gathers us into this beautiful place filled today with smells and bells and and wonderful sights of lilies, of life, of a beautiful flower surrounding us, a foretaste of that new garden gathered as we are called by his name, gathered by our name to come, all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, all who are filled with joy, all who rejoice in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and ultimately find rest in him, Hear his word of resurrection life where beautiful gardens and fertile fields bring about an abundance of fruit. The seeds are planted, new life is given, and we too are bearing fruit. Behold the master gardener, the crucified and risen Lord Jesus who encourages you with words from John's revelation, words that we will close with today. He says, To the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. You have done nothing to conquer death. Nothing to conquer your sin. Nothing to conquer Satan on your own. It was all fruitless for you to even ever try. But Christ is the first fruits 
and Christ has conquered the garden of death. He has conquered by the tree of the cross for you. Satan, the evil foe, he is crushed. And in Christ, in Christ Jesus, you are promised that you too will eat of the tree of life. You will eat of it in the land of the living, in the new Eden, the paradise of God. While you wait for that new day to come, as he promises he is indeed coming again, continue to be like Mary, filled with joy. Go and tell. Go and announce. Go and confess to others the good news. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding always keep our hearts and minds in our resurrected, risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Master Gardener. Amen.